Cassius, Dawn of War. Chapter 5 As Sindralig led the two Padawans down the side of the hill, Cassius looked around at the landscape. If there was ever a place a creature like a hut could call home, this was most definitely it. The air had a muggy, unpleasant smell to it that Cassius could only assume was to the residents of Nahutta what a fresh spring air was to him. Reaching the bottom of the hill, Master Dralig looked at his data pad and pointed to a large series of rock formations bordering the town. If these readings are correct, your master's ship is hidden away in those rocks. Let's move, and remember to stay close. The Jedi put their hoods up and started walking through the uneven terrain, stepping in puddles of mud and grime and nearly tripping over deep roots sticking from the ground. I'm already sick of this place. Once we find Master Takai, we can leave. Cassius looked up at the sky. The gray clouds above veiled the sun, but Cassius estimated it must be approximately midday. If this is what the planet was like during the day, he'd hate to be around in the evening. They reached the rock formation and began to hike their way up. Grabbing onto a rock, Sarah nearly lost her footing as a winged serpentine creature flew out of a hole in the rock wall. Ugh! What was that? Indigenous species. Count yourself lucky. They typically steer clear of intruders. Good thing, too. Their bites can be lethal. Oh, lovely. Keep moving. We're almost there. The three of them soon made it to level ground, surrounded by walls of jagged stone with a narrow pathway leading through. Scanners say that her ship is on the other side of the pathway. Be careful. I sense we may not be alone. Okay, let's hurry then. Navigating their way through the rocks and across the dirt pathway, they soon came to an open clearing. There, in the open, concealed on all sides by walls of stone, was Master Takai's shuttle. Master Dralig was right. They weren't alone. A few unsavory-looking people were busy ransacking parts of the ship, two of them holding blaster rifles, guarding the entrance. Scavengers. And Master Takai is nowhere in sight. What do we do? Stay close. Let me handle this. Master Drawlig stepped out from behind the rocks as the two armed scavengers took notice and aimed their rifles. Not a step further, Slimo. You should know it's not wise to steal Jedi property. What's it to you, old man? We found this ship abandoned. It's ours now. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to inform me as to the whereabouts of the previous owner. We don't know anything about it. Now turn around and go back the way you came before this gets ugly. Two more scavengers exited the shuttle and aimed their weapons. Must it always come to violence? Is there no way we could discuss this like civilized beings? The scavengers cocked their weapons and prepared to fire. Very well. In a blindingly fast motion, Master Drolik drew his lightsaber. Jedi! Kill him! The scavengers fired as Master Drolik calmly deflected each blast with minimal effort. Your skills need work, my friends. Or perhaps your weapons are faulty. Here. In one swift motion, the temple swordsmen pulled all four rifles from their hands and sliced them in half with a single strike. Now then, perhaps you care to reconsider your options? You can stand down and tell me what I want to know, or things will get much uglier. Sarah and Cassius watched from the rocks. He was incredible. No fear whatsoever. One of the scavengers removed a metal spear from his back and pointed it at the old master. A spear? Credit for originality, I suppose. I'll tell you what. Master Drolig tossed aside his lightsaber, which Sarah caught from behind the rocks. Face me, man to man. I'll use nothing but my own skill. You're insane! What's wrong? Afraid of an old man? The scavengers talked amongst themselves before the largest of the group stepped in front of Master Drolig. Cassius and Sarah watched with wide eyes. Shall we begin? The scavenger let out a fierce battle cry and swung his weapon as Master Drolig flipped backwards, landing on a tall rock, evading the strike as though it were in slow motion. Come down here and fight like a man! If you insist. Master Drolig leapt from the rock and landed behind the terrified scavenger, who attempted another strike only for the aged master to grab the spear by the shaft and disarm the wannabe warrior, knocking him in the face with the bottom of the spear and bringing him to his knees. Now then. 
Are you going to cooperate? Or am I going to have to get serious? You Jedi are all the same. You think you have it all figured out. But you know nothing of the true dangers of the galaxy. You live safe and secure in your grand temple, while people like us have to scrounge to survive. As the scavenger spoke, Cassius noticed one of his crew was slowly reaching behind his back. Your arrogance and complacency will be your downfall. The other scavenger quickly removed a small blaster and fired a shot at Master Drolig which grazed him in the shoulder. Cassius had seen enough. Leaping into the fray, he quickly closed his eyes and set out a force repulse that knocked the scavengers onto their backs before drawing his lightsaber and grabbing the cowardly scum by his shirt, holding his lightsaber inches from his face. Drawing a weapon on a man when his back is turned? You coward! Cassius, drop him! Cassius looked back at Master Drolig and glared at the terrified scavenger throwing him to the dirt. Master Drolig drew his weapon and pointed it at the downed thieves. The time for peaceful negotiation has ended. You will tell us what we want to know. If you don't, you'll find yourselves in more trouble than you can handle. We don't know anything. We swear. You're lying. I I'm not. No. L look, we found this shuttle here, abandoned on our patrol. We looked inside for the owner, but they weren't here. And where might we find them? The town. Three miles that way. Look for Tabu. If anyone knows where to find your friend, it's him. That's all I know. There, was that so hard? Now, you are to leave this ship. Be on your way, and pray we don't cross paths again. Be off. Quickly, the thieves ran to their speeders and fled. Cassius, you must control your anger. Intimidation is one thing, but you came very close to crossing a line a Jedi should never cross. Maybe he deserved it. Perhaps he did, but that is not your decision to make. Be mindful of your emotions, Cassius. They can fail the best of the Jedi. Cassius sighed deeply and walked into the ship, investigating the damage as Sarah surveyed the exterior. Looks like they salvaged parts from the hull. This thing won't be in any shape to fly. It's not going to fly at all. They salvaged parts from the hyperdrive, too. We'll have to get her home on our ship. Let's head into town and find this taboo. Master, your shoulder. It's a slight graze. I'll be fine. Cassius walked out and joined his companions. There's a speeder over there. Looks like those scavengers left it. It's a bit small, but I think we can all fit. Very well. I'll take the controls. When we get to town, we'll head to the bar. We're bound to find some information on this taboo there. Master Drolig sat at the front seat. Sarah and Cassius sat in the cargo space in the back. It was cramped, but they wouldn't be there long. Starting up the speeder, Drolig sped down the pathway taken by the scavengers and toward the town. Cassius, that was pretty impressive. What do you mean? You figured out the repulse technique. I haven't even gotten it down yet. I guess so. It just kind of happened. I wasn't really thinking about it. Do you think Master Takai might be in town? I don't know. If she is, we'll find her. If not, we'll find this taboo and see what he knows. As the speeder swerved to avoid a ditch, Sarah and Cassius were jostled and hit their heads together. Rubbing his forehead, Cassius looked at Sarah, a few inches from his face. She looked tired, like she hadn't slept well in a little while. Her eyes met his. Um, you okay? Huh? Yeah. It's just, you look exhausted. Is everything okay? I'm fine. I just didn't sleep well the other night. Any particular reason? I don't know. Look, I'm fine. You don't have to worry, okay? Just drop it. Okay. Sorry. Cassius was slightly taken aback at her blunt remark, but he didn't think on it too long as they soon reached the town. Parking the speeder behind some trees, they stepped out and began walking towards the entrance. We'll leave the speeder here for now. Let's head to the cantina and see what we can find out. As they walked through the streets, Cassius had serious deja vu. This place reminded him of their visit to level 1313. It didn't look like any place for respectable merchants or politicians. 
He wouldn't be surprised if there was a spice operation running in this place. Master Drolig spoke with a local and asked about the cantina. They were pointed to what looked like a large tent set up in the center of town. That's the place. Let's go. There was no door guard here. I guess they didn't care about who was getting their drinks here. As they stepped inside, they found the place crawling with scoundrels, farmers, and weary travelers stopping for refreshment. Find a seat. I'll talk to the bartender. The two Padawans walked to the back of the cantina and sat at a table. A service droid rolled over and brought them water in two tarnished metal cups. This certainly looks like the kind of place to find information on the kidnapping. I've been meaning to ask. What if, you know, Master Takai is... She's not. Cassius cut her off bluntly. I would have sensed it. She's alive. I know it. Okay. Master Drolik soon walked over, holding a drink, and sat down. Well? I spoke to the bartender. Taboo is the owner of this establishment. He will be with us shortly. As he sipped his water, Cassius looked around. If this Taboo knew where she was, they'd be one step closer to getting his master off this planet. Suddenly, a large Athorian walked over to their table and sat down. You must be Taboo? No. Cassius looked down and saw a small, gray-skinned alien of the Alina species sitting next to the Athorian. I'm Taboo. The Athorian lifted Taboo onto the table as he adjusted his goggles and took a long draw from a silver pipe, blowing a ring of smoke into Sarah's face. I'm to be told you are looking for someone, correct? Yes, we're looking for a Jedi. She sent out a distress signal this morning, and we heard nothing else. What would a Jedi Knight be doing out in these parts? This sector is controlled by the mighty Huts. You have no jurisdiction out here. She wasn't here under Republic orders. It was strictly Jedi business. She was investigating a person of interest who was involved in an attack on our temple. We need any information you can give us. Of course you do. Everyone wants something. But something is rarely free of charge. We have plenty of credits, and we'll compensate you for your services. Credits are of no importance to me. Well, then what do you want? Something of a more materialistic nature. You see, I'm a collector of rare antiquities and items not seen every day. We don't have much. But if you help us, there is a Jedi shuttle in the waste not far from here. You can take that if you wish. A shuttle? Now that is tempting. But not enough. Not enough? What else could you want? Tabu looked at Sarah, who stared back uncomfortably. That braid in your hair. I want that. Cassius clenched his fist. That braid is a sacred symbol to us. Exactly. Its value is in its worth to you. I'm very aware of what it signifies. A Padawan's ascension to knighthood is complete when it is cut. You overstep your boundaries, my friend. Oh well, far be it from me to waste your time. I'm sure you can find the information you seek on your own. Sarah took a knife from the table and quickly cut the braid as Cassie stared at her in shock. Take it, and tell us what we need to know. The creature took the braid in his hand and examined it before putting it in his pocket. A Jedi was seen in this town the other day. She was looking for someone. Unfortunately for her, it seems someone found her first. Who? Can't say for certain. But a certain group of men were seen tailing after her when she left. Which way did they go? East. The closest settlement out there is the palace of Jaka Shunto. Jaka Shunto? A long dead hut lord from the days of the Old Republic. His palace has long been used as a stronghold for pirates, spice runners, and other scum. Where do we find it? Head east through the Badlands until you reach Takuya Canyon. You'll know it when you see it. Thank you.
We'll be on our way. Sarah looked at the alien with a fierce look of disgust. A pleasure doing business with you, my dear. Come, we'll return to the ship and go from there. Leaving the cantina, they walked through the town back to their speeder and began the ride back to their ship. Sarah was quiet, not making eye contact with either Cassius or her master. I'm sorry, Sarah. I know it's fine. I did what I needed to do. Let's just find your master and get off this rock. Cassius nodded and kept his mouth shut. He felt it would be best to leave her alone for now. After a while, they reached the ship they had arrived in. R3 was working on the ship when he turned and saw them. Hey, R3. Get the ship ready. We have a lead. <laughs>